about how I was going to do a gig in the album. Well, that was last night. I did that gig at the album, and as I said, I was going to play it on this podcast, and I am. So, without further ado, here is, you can just judge for yourself. Um, you can leave your opinion if you want, like, you can you can comment on it. I don't care. Tell me I'm shit. Tell me I'm good. I don't really care. But um, yeah, I was very 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 nervous because of two things. I hadn't performed stand up in a long time. That's the first thing, and the second thing is I I didn't have my dad there. And he's usually there at all my gigs. And it was just a bit hard, but I was able to pull through it. And here it is. Hello. I'm Timmy James. I'm from Madonna. Only pulled that way, stretch your imagination. It's a shit off. Um, I've got autism, I know you're probably looking at me thinking he hasn't got autism, he's just drunk. I am, but it's beside the point. (laughs) 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 Haven't been here at the Albany for about eight months now, so just bear with me. (laughs) Haven't been on stage for a while. Um, So, speaking of having autism and stuff, Probably things that you might not know about people with autism. For example, we get a little bit, a bit literal sometimes. So, for example, my dad would say to me when I'm little, he'd be like, "Hold your horses," and I actually go uh, look for the horses. So, yeah. And there's this little story where I was about two, three years old, and my mum. My mum and dad took me to this like, little preschool, preschool barbecue in Sydney. And I had a bit of a cold. She came up to me and she was like, want some eucalyptus to me? And I'm like, I'm not eucalyptus. And she's like, no, eucalyptus. And I'm like, no, I just told you, I'm not eucalyptus. I tim. So, yeah, she just, I just kept running around going, I'm not eucalyptus, I'm not eucalyptus. And then... She took me to the side and explained it to me. I still didn't get it. So then she took me home and then I finally got it. So, yeah, um, <sighs> yeah, with me. um uh, right, I'm a bit of a Elvis fan. I have been ever since I was little. Um, my 
my mum took my dad to see this Elvis impersonator in Sydney for his birthday, and she was pregnant with me at the time. So I kind of think, well, that's probably how I started listening to Elvis. So um, there was this one time when I was little, my mum and dad were, were running around the house and I went up to dad and she's like, oh, there's something wrong with the stereo. And dad's like, what's wrong with the stereo? So they came in the lounge room and they saw this little six-year-old boy sitting in front of the C- CD playing on treat me like a fool. Dream me mean and cool. And yeah, that's, yeah, so, um, last thing, um, well, I've got a couple of things, so I want to stay up here for at least five minutes. Um, yeah, um, yeah, nervous is all fucking showing, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, just relax, 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 relax. Alright, um, Oh, what was I doing? Yeah, there was this one time where I went to um, network video and I saw this poster up on the wall. It was like one of them double movie posters and it said, Paranoia, you're next. And because I got autism and I'm literal, I thought it was telling me something. So I went up to the I went up to the guy at the counter and I'm like, so how accurate are these movie posters? Can they like tell the future or something? Because it just told me I'll be paranoid in the future. And he's like, I think you already are paranoid. I'm like, yeah, you see what that poster did to me? <sighs> There's this other time where um, I went out, um, like usually, like for a long time, I used to think that cockatoos, when they were born, they just said hello automatically. Like, I didn't know that you had to train them or anything, because usually when you see them at the pet shop or someone's house, they're like always... You go up to them and they're like, ah, ah, and I'm like, oh, ah, yeah. So um, one day I went out bird watching with a TAFE class and um, saw a few cockatoos flying, flying past. And I turned to my teacher and I'm like, why aren't they saying hello? And he's like, you serious, right? And I'm like, yeah, usually when you see them at a pet shop or at someone's house, they usually say hello to you. And he's like, they train them to do that. I'm like, now you tell me, you're supposed to be the TAFE teacher. I'm standing here thinking a cockatoo's going to fly past and be like, I like him! And then, and then all of a sudden it just flew past and didn't say anything. So I'm like, yeah. My impression of cockatoos is that they're assholes. <laughs> so anyway, before I go, I'm actually filming this because my mum, she's at home and she's very sick. She can't really come out tonight, so I'm filming it with her. I'm also filming it to, I'm going to send it to Pauline Hanson to show her this is what happens when you put autistic people from mainstream schooling. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs>
Um, I can't remember when it was, but anyway, here it is. <laughs> I had some eucalyptus, and she went up to me and she's like, hey, hey, Timmy, want some eucalyptus oil? And I'm like, I'm not eucalyptus. And she's like, no, eucalyptus. I'm like, I just said, I'm not eucalyptus. <laughs> and she's like, no, it's eucalyptus oil. I still didn't get it, so I'm running around the preschool going, I'm not eucalyptus, I'm not eucalyptus. <laughs> and she took me home and then explained it to me a bit more. I still didn't get it. <laughs> and that's the end of that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you something else too. I, um, I'm also a bit gullible as well. Like, like, in, like you know, every time when you... Like, every time when I saw a cockatoo, like, I'd see a cockatoo, like, in a pet shop or at someone's house, they'd always say hello, and I'm thinking, how do they do that? And, like, so, I'm, I've got this thing spinning around in my head, and I'm like, oh, the, uh, this is just crazy, the cockatoo must be, like, learning to say things from birds like humans, like, say hello! Um, so I was out at Gateway Island one day with my tape class and my um, I, I turned to my teacher, like there were cockatoos up in here, and I turned to my teacher and I said, why aren't they saying hello? And it's like, Tim, you're serious, right? And I'm like, yeah, usually when you see them at a pet shop or at someone's house, they usually say hello to you. And it's like, they train them to do that? I'm like, really? You're supposed to be the teacher, I'm standing here thinking your cockatoos going to fly past and going, Hello, kid! Like, oh, it's just crazy. Um, Alright, last but not least, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit of a Beatles fan, and also don't know how to do a segue. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a Beatles fan, and um, I'm also a conspiracy theorist. So, I I'll, I'll look at like, I've got this thing in the back of my mind thinking, wonder what it would be like if John Lennon didn't die and the Beatles got back together. So I had this idea for a movie. Like, usually when they do a John Lennon biopic, at the end they have, um, like, they show him going out of the car or going in. And um, then Mark David Chapman's standing there and he's like, it's the Lennon. And then and he dies and then end credits. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. <laughs> um, so with my movie, we sort of start with that. And it sort of messes with people's heads going, oh, what is this, like a flashback? So we start with it. He's coming out of the camera. You see Mark David Chapman there standing there. It's like Mr. Leonard, before he gets to pull the trigger, Terminator comes out from fucking nowhere. And he shoots him, and then we get to see what it would be like if the Beatles got back together. <laughs> so I was thinking like about this movie because I'm like, oh, this could really happen. Like there are some really, like really messed up movies out there, like um, Frozen, for example. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're thinking, Tim. Let it go. But anyway. Um, yeah, so like with, like with this movie, I was thinking about casting, and I'm like, I wonder who would be good for casting, and then I thought, well, I'm not that rich, so I'll just play John and Paul, so I can do it, and I'm like, a really good impression, so for John, I'll be like, be that lots of kids and Jesus did, or religion at that time, I wasn't knocking on the town, I was just saying it, as a fact. And then for Paul, I wouldn't use like any famous quotes he said, I'd just put in like something funny like have Paul walk up to John and be like, Hey John, yeah Paul, I slept with Yoko. What do you mean you slept with Yoko? Oh no. Oh wait, I didn't like her anyway, you can have her. <laughs> okay, thank you.
Okay, um, alright, I got another one here, it's from the Albion again, and slightly more confident, once again, um, sorry about the quality for the previous clip, but anyway, what can you do? <laughs> so here's me doing a joke about, about the Led Zeppelin song, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. And here it is. I'm a, I'm a Led Zeppelin fan. I like listening to Led Zeppelin and Beatles and all that. And being autistic, I'm also a bit literal, so I'm listening to the song, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, and I think... Oh, let me just put this down. Yeah, I just... I'm listening to the song and I'm like... I wonder if that's how he broke up with his girlfriend or something. Like Robert Plant playing a song to his girlfriend is sitting on the couch with his guitar and she comes in and he's like, Hey babe, come here, I've got a song for you. And she's like, okay, this is awesome. So he starts playing, he's like, Baby, 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 I'm gonna leave you. So she is that first line. And um yeah, she is that first line, and it's like, she's thinking, he's not serious, not really going to leave him. So then he continues on with a song. I said, baby, you know I'm going to leave you. Now she's getting pissed off. She's listening to the song, he's, he's continuing on with a song. Leave you in the summertime. Yeah, I'm a good singer, I know. Um, yeah, he's, he's continuing on with the song. She's starting to get pissed off, storms out of the room, and she starts packing a suitcase. And if you're watching this on a movie, like if they made it into a movie, if you're watching, you think she's packing her suitcase, so she's packing it up. And she walks in with her suitcase, and he's like, hey, I was only kidding, I was only kidding. See, listen, baby, 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 I'm not gonna leave you. And like, then, like, she's like, I don't care! You wrote that song about me, I'm pissed off, and I just, I don't know what I'm gonna do! So what, you're gonna leave me? No! He's in your clothes! Fuck off! Um. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Um. A good one indeed. Hold on. Yeah, a good one indeed. That was... Uh, I'm very proud of that joke. i still got people coming up to me today and telling me, remember that Led Zeppelin joke you did? And I'm like, yeah, I remember. Those were good times back then. But yeah, here's a, another one from that same gig. Because I had to put them into parts because, like, to upload them to YouTube and stuff. So, here's one from that same gig, and I'm where I bag out the customer service at Macca's. And here it is. Hey, yours is sick. Um, I also don't like waiting like everybody else does. Um, I went. <laughs> I went to, like a week ago or something, I was at, I was at Macca's and the service there is shit, they could just change the name to like, like when you walk in, in they're like, welcome to McDonald's, um, your coffee might take like 24 hours to make, but anyway, um, yeah, I went in there and I got my coffee and they gave me a receipt and you gotta wait for the number. Waiting there for about 10 minutes. I'm too much of a pussy to go up and ask. So my dad, my dad goes up and he's like, hey, what's going on with this coffee? Sorry, it's not on the board. Like, they didn't even write it up on the board, so they make it. And the guy's like making it, and then he stops and he's like, hold on, where's the chocolate barrel? It's right in front of him. <laughs> like, the chocolate barrel's right in front of him. And he's like, where is it? He calls up, like, the guys in the office and he's like, like guys in the kitchen, you bring me a chocolate barrel? And I'm like, it's right in front of you, dickhead. 
I'm going to drama class in like five minutes. If you don't hurry up, uh, this is going to get dramatic. I'll show you what two years of drama class can do. <laughs>
She's like, no, Timmy, you eucalyptus. And I'm like, I just said, I am not eucalyptus. And she's like, no, it's eucalyptus oil. And I'm like, I still didn't get it. So, <laughs> so there's this little boy running around, running around a preschool, just going, I'm not eucalyptus, I'm not eucalyptus. And then, <laughs> and then she took me home. And then, yeah, that's the end of that. Um, also. <laughs> Okay, finally picked up the right microphone. Alright, here's the second part of that gig. Enjoy! I, like, I'd just be very gullible as well, like I'd see a cockatoo, like every time you see cockatoos in the shops or... Like, at someone's house, they're always saying hello to you. So I'm like, oh, how do they do that? Like, like they must be like humans and, like, learn to say words from birth. So I just I just assumed that. And then one day I was out here at Gateway Island doing some bird watching and saw some cockatoos up in, up in the air. And I turned to, my, um, turned to my teacher and I said, I said, um, why aren't they saying hello? And he, he turned to me and he's like, Tim, you're serious, right? I'm like, yeah, usually when you see him in the pet shop or at someone's <laughs> house, they usually say hello to you. And he's like, um, they train him to do that? And I'm like, now you tell me. You're supposed to be the teacher. And I'm sitting, I'm standing here thinking that the cockatoos are going to fly past and go, hello, Tim! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I was little, um, I was living in I was living in Sydney at the time. That's where I'm born, where I was born. Um, we went to my mum and dad took me to Blacktown, um, and we went to we went to Myers, and like all three four year old boys at that time, I was obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine, and so. I saw a bus there, like a little toy bus named Olgy. So I asked my mum, like, can you get me a bus? And she got me a bus. And then after, like, we were paying for it, and mum said, so thank you to a nice lady, and this is a big chubby lady. So I turned to the lady and I said, thank you, Bulgy. And mum and, and mum and dad just grabbed me and they're like, oh, what the hell just happened? <laughs> um, I'll tell you a story about my mum. She's, um, not very well at the moment. She got a terminal illness, but it's pretty pretty funny actually because she hallucinates all the time. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about my mum. She's um, not very well at the moment. She got a terminal illness, but it's pretty pretty funny actually because she hallucinates all the time when she's on medication. So like, I'm in there with her one day. And we're watching Law and Order. And she's like, did you see that purple elephant up there? I'm like, no. And she's like, yeah, there's a purple elephant on the stand. Or with a parrot on his shot. And I'm like, yeah, right, Mum. Okay, I'll believe you. I go away and then I come back. I'm like, where's the pur purple elephant gone? And she's like, he blew up. The TV was on. <laughs> um, all right, last but not least... Um, I am sick to death of hearing about Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, he, um, I'll tell you what, like, he's always saying, like, we're going to build a wall. Why don't we build a wall in front of your house so you don't become president? Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep, that's the right microphone. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was just that was just crazy. Like I can't believe that was like over a year ago now, and I still haven't. I still haven't gone to Melbourne and performed at the comedy clubs like I keep telling people I'm gonna do. Because of my fucking chicken. <laughs>
But yeah, that's why I'm doing the open mics at the Albion because I want to try and hone my craft and like practice more before I um I go to Melon because I don't know what it's going to be like down there. And I don't know if I'm ready for it yet, so I'm just going to I'm just going to try and keep practicing until I feel I'm ready to go to Melbourne. And I've got this one thing that um this thing that I'm going to close this out on. Now there was this one time at the Galaba um This, because I performed at the Galaba over a, a total of five times. And, um, yeah, there was this one time where, where instead of, of, um, doing comedy, I wanted to sing. And Christmas Galaba was a perfect opportunity to do it. And I w- I, for a long time, I'd wanted to do, like, an Elvis show. Um, like a, um, a thing where, like, um, we'd have, like, a few people as Elvis impersonators just get up and sing Elvis songs. And they didn't really want to do that. So they said, I'll tell you what. You could sing an Elvis song at a Glaba. We've got the Christmas one coming up. How would you like to sing Blue Christmas? And I'm like, would I ever? So here it is to close us out. Here is me at the Glaba last year in December singing Blue Christmas. Enjoy. And I'm Timmy James, I don't give a fuck, and bye-bye. Thank you.